All right, guys. So we're going to get into chapter six here. Now, this was originally part of the same unit when we were dealing with solutions, chapter five, and this acid base topic of chapter six. But in our new at home learning model, we are going to do the two things separately with separate tests. Um, so here we go. In chapter six, we are going to eliminate quite a bit. We're going to take a lot of this stuff out. It's going to be a much uh, smaller, call it shorter and sweeter version of chapter six, because a lot of this acid base theory that we're going to have to get into is going to have to be changed, modified, or outright abandoned when we try and do further studies with acids and bases in Chem 30. So in a lot of ways, this actually might simplify some of the Chem 30 stuff for you. Uh, if you are going to be taking that uh, next year. So, quick review, 6.1. This is just straight up theory that you've already learned in the solutions unit. We did take a look at the four different types of solutions. All right, if I had um, a molecular compound dissolved in water, I would expect it to be not conductive. I would expect no effect on litmus. Therefore, an appropriate pH would be a pH of seven and I would call this a neutral molecular solution. Very much like what you guys were doing with your Chapter 5A lab and some of the practice work that you saw early in Chapter 5. Most ionic compounds, okay, most of those dissolve because of water's high polar nature, and so it does produce and dissociate into ions, making a conductive electrolyte solution, but again, most ionic compounds have no effect on litmus, so again, we end up with that neutral pH of 7, a number you guys know from previous courses, and we would just call this a neutral ionic solution. Now, acids and bases are what we're going to spend more time with here in Chapter 6. And so, acids are conductive because of ionization, a reaction with water, and it does affect litmus and show litmus to be red, so I would expect this to be less than a pH of 7, somewhere between 0 and 7. And, of course, this would be an acidic solution. Conversely, bases, again, do dissociate into cations and those hydroxide ions. They affect litmus to turn it blue. And so you were looking for greater than 7 as a pH. And we call these basic solutions. So that's all stuff that you guys know from before. This is all based upon Arrhenius' definition for acids and bases. He said these things produced H plus and OH minus. Unfortunately, Arrhenius is not enough. Arrhenius' definition cannot explain something like the ammonia in your Windex bottle at home for giving glass on a streak-free shine is a basic solution because there is no uh, ionic nature here and there is no OH minus shown. So there has to be something else going on. All right, this is going to lead to a modified Arrhenius formula or definition for us. And it's based around something known as hydronium. Now, something we would talk about in class is think about the hydrogen ion. Hydrogen as an atom, if we go back to how we uh, know it, it has one mass unit and one proton within it. Well, if protons are mass units, you might notice that there are no neutrons here. And if we're talking about this being uh, something that is neutral, if I turn it into H+, it's still got one proton with it, but it's given up its electron. So when we look at it this way, hydronium ion, or that H+, that we're looking at, or H+, plus, sorry, not hydronium, the H+, plus that we're looking at here, is really just a proton. There's nothing left if hydrogen gives up its electron. It's just a proton hanging out in a nucleus. So this proton would be you know, incredibly tiny and have a fairly massive positive charge with it. It's highly unlikely that a proton in a solution full of water could exist on its own. All right, this would be a highly reactive particle and couldn't really just hang out. So what we suggest now in the modified Arrhenius is that water takes that proton and forms something known as the hydronium ion. Water with an extra H and that extra positive charge. This is known as hydronium. So we redefine our modified Arrhenius definition for acids this way. And the more modern view that we would take is that 
if I have an acid, it is something that reacts with water to produce H3O+. That's my new acidic character. And my basic solutions are still caused by OH, but I can produce or make new OHs in these ones. Okay? Uh, note that some of your textbook questions will still just use H plus as an abbreviation for H3O plus, but this can only happen in chapters 6 and beyond. Okay, so there's some of the quick theory for 6.1. What we want to do now is just sort of get into some of the things that we can calculate and work with uh, for describing acidic and basic solutions. For this, we tend to use the pH scale, which is something you guys are familiar with, and a less common but equally um, accurate pOH idea. So, continuing on through the theory before we get into any sort of calculations here, is talking about water. Now, equilibrium is a Chem 30 idea. We briefly touch on it here. We're not going to develop it uh, very much, but when we take a look at pure water, you'll see this whole idea of a balance system, as shown by these double arrows. When pure water is tested with really, really, really sensitive instruments, guess what? It always shows to be slightly conductive. Remember, to make an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte solution, this conductivity we get in solution is due to the presence of ions in solution. Now, pure water, water being a molecular substance, all right, shouldn't really contain ions. But when we test it with really sensitive instruments, more sensitive than anything we would have at St. Francis, we always find that pure, pure water always contains a small fraction of ions, which would make pure water slightly conductive. So this is explained by an equation in which two water molecules crash into each other, and in that crash, exchange a proton, giving one of them an extra proton, or one of the extra hydrogens, to make hydronium, and the other one, of course, would have had to have lost it. It is now just hydroxide. Note we would still expect the pH of this system to be 7, because you're producing equal amounts of hydronium and hydroxide, so it should still be neutral, but you do have a small amount of charged particles here. So, what this means is that the ionization of water into ions is really low. When you drink a glass of pure water, you're not drinking a whole bunch of acid or a whole bunch of base. That would be problematic. No, the, the amounts here are very small, and they still equalize to a pH of 7. But what this does show us is that there is a concentration of the acid ion and the base ion. Remember, this gives us our acidic character. This gives us our basic character whenever we look at a solution. And so, when we did studies with water and looked at this ionization of pure water into ions, we realized that pure water was going to have a very specific amount of hydronium and hydroxide ions, and they were always going to be equal. So, great. Pure water contains 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter, a very small amount of hydronium, and 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, which is about 1 in every 10 billion atoms of uh, hydroxide ions in solution. So, the question you're asking now is, well, Bohechuk, what does this have to do with acidic and basic solutions? Well, as we'll start to learn more and more, acids and bases aren't really the chemical compounds that we dissolve in water. Acids and bases are actually going to be the compound dissolved in water messing with this balance that we see for water. Something that we might dissolve in water might cause water to produce much more H3O+, therefore making an acidic solution. Or something in water, when it's dissolved, might produce a lot more OH-. Or at least just mess with that particular balance point. So acidic and basic solutions can be described by their relative concentration of hydronium uh, ions in solution. So if hydronium is exactly equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, then the solutions should still be neutral. However, if the hydronium ion concentration goes up and is now greater 
than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So your exponent gets smaller here. Then the solution would be acidic because you now have a greater proportion of hydronium compared to hydroxide. On the flip side then, if this concentration goes down, in other words the negative exponent gets large, then the solution would be said to be basic. Okay? An important thing to realize here is that considering that they were in balance beforehand, if I increase hydronium, then OH- has to decrease proportionately. If I decrease hydronium, then the OH amount has to increase proportionately. This is relatively due to that equilibrium thing, which we'll get into in much more in Chem 30, but ultimately as one goes up, the other has to go down, and vice versa. All right, and so this would sh shift us between acidic and basic solutions. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about this pH scale, and we will take a look at some ways that we can calculate the pH and pOH of solutions.